GCSMR Global Center for Siddha Medicine and Research ஒருங்கிணைந்த மருத்துவ வழிமுறை வாயிலாக தமிழ் மருத்துவ முறையான சித்த மருத்துவத்தை உலகறிய செய்யும் நோக்கத்துடன் செயல்பட்டு வருகிறது சென்னை மற்றும் அமெரிக்காவில் பதிவு செய்யப்பட்ட தொண்டு நிறுவனமான ஜி சி எஸ் எம் ஆர் வணக்கம் அண்ட் கிரீட்டிங்ஸ் டு எவ்ரி ஒன் ஆன் பிஹாஃப் ஆஃப் குளோபல் சென்டர் ஃபார் சித்தா மெடிசின் அண்ட் ரீசர்ச் ஜி சி எஸ் எம் ஆர் ஐ வெல்கம் ஈச் அண்ட் எவ்ரி ஒன் ஆஃப் யூ ஃபார் அ வெரி இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் அண்ட் அ மச் நீடட் வெபினார் அட் திஸ் டைம் வி ஆர் ஜி சி எஸ் எம் ஆர் இஸ் அ ரெஜிஸ்டர்ட் 501c tax exempt non profit organization it's registered here in usa um, and in tamil nadu uh, the major aim or i would say motto of our um, gcsmr is bringing traditional siddha medical knowledge to the fore through advanced research and integrative approach our mission is to facilitate research and document the outcomes of the traditional siddha medicine in an integrative medicine approach our vision is to spread the benefits of traditional siddha medicine outside southern india and throughout the world and provide a low cost alternative to conventional medical treatment for chronic diseases our major achievements with a small several baby steps since 2014 we have come this far with the help of dr selva dr arul and several other physicians um here in usa um our hope is that more people physicians will join our team with uh, physicians all over us and globally Uh, the first major achievement i would say is we have signed a memorandum of understanding and establishing siddha chair at manipal university with so much hard work and diligence of dr arulamudan he is uh, joined in our meeting and the second is we have uh, siddha as an elective in a medical school curriculum at morehouse medical school atlanta with an unending help of dr sridharan rajagopalan dr selva dr arul this is a milestone achievement for siddha medicine in general we are hoping other medical schools will join the list soon uh, we are uh, we we are conducting monthly webinars on several uh, topics and if anyone in the audience if you are interested in this in a particular um a disease condition or anything uh, please reach out to us at gcsmr20 uh, at gmail.com or president at uh, globalsiddha.org and we are also providing health coaching uh, with our siddha doctors and you can do video chat if you are here in usa and you can go in person if you are in uh, tamil nadu um and we ask for a donation of uh, $100 per consult per person um this is all donations going towards um setting up uh, manipal chair uh, sorry siddha chair at manipal university um and i take this time to thank every donor who has um, given us their Uh, roots for the success of the non-profit organization donors are the soul and roots for the success of any non-profit organization without donors we cannot go anywhere i take this time really to thank each and every one of the donors who are giving their uh, valuable money for a great cause we appreciate donations of any amount um as i always say every single penny counts please visit our website uh, please mute yourself if you are not talking uh, please please mute please visit our website at globalcenterforsiddha.org there's a lot of um, information in there about siddha practices siddha home recipes like chukumalli kapi ulundangali um and um, several several recipes are there and we have all the webinars that we have conducted in the past 
it'll be available in our website and the one today will also be uploaded soon. Uh, we have also been doing a series called Tamilarin Siddha Maruthuva Sirapugal in collaboration with American Tamil Media. And we are also working on broadcasting Siddha tips continuously in American Tamil Radio. Please stay tuned. Um, now I invite Dr. Sornam Sankar. He'll be the moderator. Um, and now I'm handing over the stage to um, Shankar. Manakam Shankar. வணக்கம் ரமா வணக்கம் எல்லோருக்கும் காலை வணக்கம் உங்களுடைய நேரத்தை இந்த நேரத்தில் நீங்கள் ஞாயிற்றுக்கிழமை வேலையில் வந்து கலந்து கொண்டதற்கு நன்றி ஐ திங்க் ரமா ஆல்ரெடி கேவ் என் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் அபவுட் ஜிசிஎஸ்எம்ஆர் அண்ட் ஷி ஆல்சோ நான் மென்ஷன் அபவுட் இன்டெகிரேட்டிவ் மெடிசின் ஸோ த ஹோல் ஆர் சீரியஸ் இஸ் டியூன் டு Uh, have integrative medicine in mind which what is integrative medicine right we all know about conventional medicine or modern medicine or allopathy whatever we call we I mean usually go to the doctor and get medicine and it's a very successful uh, you know medicine evidence based medicine you know it goes through a lot of rigorous uh, studies all over worldwide and it's a knowledge based medicine and however you know um, there are certain diseases some chronic diseases they are not really uh, curable completely 100 percent by uh, this conventional medicine it manages symptoms of diseases but very effective in treating you know trauma or emergencies i mean there is no other medicine which can help uh, doing this but however uh, the last uh, two three decades an you know, alternative medicine um, is being Uh, explored all over the world especially even you know in the us the national uh, institute of health is pursuing a department called alternative uh, medicine where uh, any non mainstream or traditional med- medical practices have been used for centuries in various you know countries for treating common diseases so we also know about uh, traditional siddha medicine uh, from tamil nadu we all uh, are familiar with it at some point Uh, because it's a guidance to a very healthy uh, life refined over centuries it's a uh, more of a way of living you know it's originated in, in south india between you know 2500 to uh, 1700 bc and uh, it consists of uh, preventive kapu curative nikam and niraipu which is promotive and it also incorporates uh, you know five primordial elements nilam neer thee vali veli uh, so this is a, a medicine which is practiced by our ancient tamils for centuries and now the question of integrative medicine which is a reason you know phenomena where uh, it combines both the conventional and the traditional medicine but only based on evidences so this is focusing on a healing the whole individual uh, instead of just targeting just the diseases so the our aim in gcsmr is basically moving towards the integrative medicine or rather rama mentioned about other things like it's tamil integrative medicine which is more of includes siddha pranayama yogam and varnam varma kalai you know thirukural wellness so a lot of things you know combined so the the this particular seminar today also is tuned towards um, providing uh, advice you know from experts based on integrative medicine so we have two speakers and because the cardiac arrest is a major um, uh, you know disease now striking even young people and uh, you know asians especially indians or tamils are very prone to uh, heart attack even at a young age so that's the reason gcsmr has arranged this and uh, we have two speakers one the first speaker is a uh, you know expert in uh, cardiology uh, he's uh, dr janak raman i think most of you already uh, know him um, you know he is the very well known to tamil community in the in north america and globally because he donated the seed money and spent a lot of his time and money to campaign and raise funds for the harvard university tamil chair and since then you know he also made a significant donation and foundation to other university tamil chairs like toronto university tamil chair 
and uh, you know university of california berkeley right now he is in the process of setting up a original arjuna tamil chair and he has also donated shares uh, in uh, department of cologne in germany uh, toronto i uh, mean uh, also in houston uh, various places uh, originally dr janagraman uh, he studied uh, in uh, chengalpet medical college uh, and also he had initial training in kill park hospital and then he moved to the us in 1975 and he did his post graduate studies in uh, new york and cardiology training at temple university in philadelphia and since 1983 he is practicing cardiology in the city of altuna and he has been a ch- the chairman and department of medicine executive member for several years he has been a board of trustees of the hospital and served as the chief of cardiology and currently he is a director of cardiology uh, serving at uh, university of pittsburgh in altuna campus so i invite uh, dr janagram and thank him for uh, lending his valuable time for this webinar thank, thank you dr janagram i will also share his presentation வணக்கம் குட் மார்னிங் டு எவ்ரி ஒன் ஐ எம் பிளீஸ் டு பார்ட்டிசிபேட் இன் திஸ் வெபினார் அண்ட் ஐ வாஸ் அப்ரோச் ரீசெண்ட்லி ஹேவிங் மூவ் டு வாஷிங்டன் டிசி ஏரியா ஜஸ்ட் ஃபியூ மந்த்ஸ் பேக் தட் தெர் ஆர் சிக்ஸ் காரிய கரஸ்ட் அண்ட் டெத் ஆஃப் தமிழ் கம்யூனிட்டி இன் தி ஏஜ் ஆஃப் ஃபார்ட்டி டு ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபைவ் within the period of 6 weeks and so they said why not we educate about heart attacks and so that is the main reason today in webinar the modern medicine i'm going to talk about cardiac causes of the heart attack and the topic is very interesting old disease with new developments or data to prevention and at this point i would like to start with my first slide heart attack old disease new ways to pre- prevent of course all of you know heart attack is very prevalent lately but how long we know about the heart attack i believe it's one of the old diseases and it has been well documented how old 3000 years back next Thirumoolar, who is a Tamil saint, documented this. And his poem calls, Adappanni vaitar, adisilai undar, madak kodi yarodu mandanam kondar, idappakkamai irai nondudu yandra, kedakka paduttar, kedandu yandare. Most of the people will understand the meaning of that. What he says is, a man who worked very hard, came home, ate full, that is adisilai means full, மடக்கொடி யாரும் மந்தனம் கொண்டார் இவர் சேவிங் ஏ வெரி குட் டைம் வித் இஸ் ஃபேமிலி அண்ட் வாய் இடப்பக்கமே இறை நொந்தது என்றார் கொஞ்சமா நெஞ்ச வலிக்குது அப்படின்னு லெஃப்ட்ல கையை காமிச்சாராம் கிடக்கப்படுத்தார் கிடந்தொழிந்தாரே தட் வாஸ் அ ஹார்ட் அட்டாக் ஆஸ் ஃபர் அஸ் ஐ நோ இன் தமிழ் லிட்ரேச்சர் மென்ஷன் த்ரீ தௌசண்ட் இயர்ஸ் பேக் பை செயின்ட் திருமூலர் ஹூ ஹஸ் ரிட்டன் த பத்தாம் திருமுறை இன் இங்கிலீஷ் வேர்ல்ட் வில்லியம் ஹெபர்டன் in 1772 mentioned about the heart attack he gives a very good description and he called that as angina that's a latin word still everybody says angina pectoris and then recently i came up with an article in the bay state health.org in february 2022 it came in the american college of cardiology journal of course american college of cardiology is the number one association of the cardiologists in the world and first heart attack documented according to them in a egyptian princess lived between 1580 to 1550 bc i don't know how they document but that was recorded in the journal so i thought i will mention it. okay let's come to the we proved that it's a very old disease what are the causes or risk factors we call and 
there are some that nothing you and I could do. I call that as a hereditary reasons or non-modifiable reasons. There are something we could do because we got the disease with our behavior. So it's called acquired disease and they are modifiable. If we change your behavior, we could modify the risk factors or causes of the heart attack. Next. And what are the hereditary causes? I'm calling the first two and it's a very simple age 65 and, and above. What do you mean by that? As we get older, our body gets bad, disintegrates slowly, but some of us do it earlier than that with our bad behavior. But even if we do with the normal so-called healthy living, age 65 and above, you will have some heart disease. So that's non-modifiable cause unless you could uh, postpone the event with a good behavior. The next hereditary cause is a cholesterol. Of course, cholesterol, we all hear very much lately. There are several kinds of cholesterol, total cholesterol, inherited low levels of HDL. HDL is a high density lipoprotein, which is a good cholesterol in our body. And LDL is the next one, which is inherited high levels will cause heart attack. And that is a low density lipoprotein. For you to understand, low density lipoproteins are very bad for health. It's like a small golf ball. And HDL, uh, scientifically, they are bigger sizes, molecular when you see, but they are high density, that means high class, good cholesterol. Of course, if we hit somebody with a, a baseball, which is a big ball, that would not do any harm compared to the golf ball, even though it is small in size, it causes more problem. So for you to understand, so LDL is the bad one. People with type 1 diabetes is the next reason why when you have type 1 diabetes, you are insulin requiring and all over the every body cell gets into trouble and insulin resistance and atherosclerosis starts early. And that's the reason people with the diabetes have a heart disease. It's a hereditary reason. Women gone through menopause. What do you mean by that? It's a hereditary. Of course, you and I know women have estrogen levels compared to men in a higher levels and they are well protective for the heart disease. So they have almost 10 years extra plus in developing the heart disease compared to men. So in other words, if you and I develop at the age of 40 as a man and they develop the heart disease 50 or vice versa, in short, they have a 10 plus years of extra uh, protection. It's very interesting during this, during my one of the main lectures 25, 30 years back at the local VA hospital in Pittsburgh, uh, I told the guys, hey, do you know women live 10 years longer and men die in short 10 years? Do you know the reason? One guy raised the hand and said, doc, we just wanted to die. You know, it's a little fun that he thinks that he has to die early. At any rate, they are 10 years well protected. Next. What are the acquired causes? High blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, smoking, Obesity, obesity, of course, as a definition is 30% more than the body weight, ideal body weight. I don't want to spend time in what is the ideal body weight. There is a formula, there is a table you could refer and sedentary lifestyle. Even if you are not obese, if you have a sedentary lifestyle, according to American Heart Association, that is a risk factor and stress. Everybody calls stress and we know it's a part of life. Some of us deal with the same stress in a different way than others but definitely it's a risk factors. And even in stress, it's a good and bad stress. What do you mean by good and bad? With all the problems in life, it's a bad stress. Even in good stress, people have a heart attack. I could tell you at least to two of my patients during playoff game in the football, they were so happy the team won and they had a heart attack in the bar sitting there and died. So stress level, it ruptures the atherotic plaque, which we will see later. The last one I wanted to bring it up to your attention is a sleep disorder. I don't say it's a lack of sleep. Everybody says they sleep, but sleep disorder is a sleep apnea, it's called. People who snore, they do not have enough oxygen going into their body while they sleep and they get tired, arrhythmias happen. And of course they have higher incidence of heart attack. Next. Next. Now I will show you a mechanism how the heart attack happens. You could see in this picture, your pipe is there. That is the pipeline and the heart 
arteries. And then you can see the yellow stuff is a plaque that the cholesterol builds up. And you could see the RBC's blood flowing. Now we will start the video and see. If you have acute coronary syndrome, blood flow through your coronary arteries is severely reduced or completely blocked. One possible cause of reduced blood flow is atherosclerosis. In this condition, a buildup of a fatty substance called plaque can narrow your coronary arteries. If this plaque ruptures, a blood clot can form and block the artery. A blood clot is the most common cause of coronary artery blockage. Other less common causes of reduced blood flow include coronary artery spasm or dissection. In a coronary artery spasm, triggers such as drugs, smoking, cold weather, and extreme stress or emotions can cause a temporary and sudden tightening of a coronary artery. During a coronary artery dissection, the inside wall of one of your coronary arteries separates, which can block blood flow. Next. If you have acute. Next. Next. Okay, we, will, we saw the mechanism. Now, what are the symptoms? And chest pain is the commonest of symptoms otherwise called discomfort, and shortness of breath, pain in your arm, shoulder, or neck. I also want to bring it up at this time, pain in the jaw, even though it is not mentioned. It's very rare, but it does happen. I can tell you my own experience in the past 40 years, two patients who had a heart attack was referred to me by the dentist because they went there as a jaw pain or tooth pain. And after checking them, the local dental person thought there is nothing wrong, a knowing patient is a diabetic and obese and high blood pressure and a smoker. He thought, why not you go and see Dr. J? And he ended up, we saw a heart attack, a mild one, of course. So in other words, very rare, it could still happen. And nausea and vomiting next, sweaty spell. You swell, you, spit, uh, you, <clears throat> you have a sweaty spell very profusely, more than what you anticipate for the amount of physical work and lightheadedness and dizziness and extreme fatigue. These are the causes. I want to bring it something to your attention. There is the symptoms are totally different between men and women. That's the reason women have delay in having the treatment for the heart attack. And there are several uh, reports that women are not well treated for the heart attack. It is not not well treated. They are not diagnosed in time. Why? Men, when they complain chest pain, they feel it's uh, somebody sitting on their chest as a heaviness, statistically. Women complain that it's a squeezing type or some discomfort, it's not at all a pain. So they always get late. And they have more of a nausea and vomiting and tiredness and lightheadedness are their symptoms more than anything else. So there are some differences for men and women. So I just want to bring it up to your attention. Next. <laughs> This is a very important slide. No apparent symptoms. What do you mean by that? There are some people who don't have any chest pain whatsoever. Probably your relatives, your friends, you have heard, never complained of anything and suddenly they found a heart attack. 30% of people have heart attack, especially if they are a diabetic people. Why? You and I already know when you have diabetes, you are numb, the nervous system gets affected and you get your feet and uh, fingers, the neuropathy. And the same way, the nervous system or the neurons around the cardiac structures do not have the uh, better function to solve. So what happens, they do not feel the pain. So it's a neuropathy rather than anything else related to the diabetic people. And hypertensive people also reported to have a chest uh, heart attack without any apparent symptoms. So it's only one third, 30 percent of them just have to watch out. Now we will come to the prevention. When you know what causes it, then you could prevent it. As Thiruvallur always says, no inadi, no imudalanadi, aidanikum vainadi, wipe a chayal. So if you have to find the root cause to prevent it, of course, in uh, English medicine, we are very good in treating the symptoms, but now we are getting better and better. We are going upstream to find what causes the stuff. I could tell you in the past 40 years, cholesterol was found and then 
high blood pressure, we are also, the numbers have changed even to treat earlier. So we have to find them earlier and then treat them earlier. So that's high blood pressure, diabetes. Uh, in high blood pressure, there are two kinds, 95% of the time are no reason except uh, um, lifestyle changes. There are some tumors in the body, but the adrenaline and uh, aldosterone mechanisms and causes, that's called the secondary high blood pressure. So when a very young person has a high blood pressure, then we go and look for a reason. And if you treat the reason, like there is a uh, narrowing of the arteries going to the kidney and you treat put it with a stent or clean it, then they will be completely cured. But 95% of the people when they have a high blood pressure, it's because of the other factors like uh, obesity and diabetes and non-active and essential hypertension we call it has to be treated. And the, 130 systolic, diastolic should be 80. That is our goal. But as we get older, we get hardening of the arteries and the pressure goes up. But we should always try to keep the blood pressure below 130. And diabetes, there are type 1 and type 2. Type 2 is from obesity and older age or middle age we get. Type 1 is a lack of insulin right from the birth. They are treated uh, with the insulin pump at a younger age. And high cholesterol, I mentioned the good, bad, ugly types that the total cholesterol should be below 200. Uh, good cholesterol should be above 40. The bad cholesterol should be below 100. And there are some reports if the bad cholesterol the LDL is below 72, even if we have a blockages of 40 to 50 percent, they become 20 to 30 percent within six months if you treat. There are several medications. The common one is being the uh, statins. And of course, there are so many new ones have come as statins cause a lot of muscle aches and pains. So we'll go through it later. Smoking is the next uh, cause that could be prevented. Smoking cessation, nicotine patches have come. Obesity, I mentioned already 30% more than your body weight. And of course, you and I know what we have to do for obesity. And I will show you slides what I think is the most simple way to do. Sedentary lifestyle, even if you're not overweight, if you're not active, then you are prone to get heart attacks and stress, good and bad, I mentioned. And it is also historically stress has caused heart attack. You and I know in Salapadigaram that uh, Nirinjayan had a, a suddenly he collapsed after hearing that he has done injustice to Kanagi. That is also your stress in my judgment. Suddenly it happened. And he must have had a heart disease. And when he couldn't hear that he made a terrible mistake, he fell. It's not just a dramatic. It I believe it was a heart attack. And sleep disorder, sleep apnea, as I mentioned, people, men usually snore more. And they have, of course, uh, thermolar muchi pairchi is being given by our friend Sundar. And I know a couple of my friends I have referred, they have stopped snoring. And it is a very good thing we could follow in Siddha. There is a treatment compared to an American medicine. You have to do surgery, you will apathy to take care of this. So Siddha has a very good role to play in this, in my judgment. Next. Next. Okay. If you suspect a heart attack, what do you do? And then easy to do is 911. One that is an emergency call. Do not drive to the hospital, even if you have a pain. Oh, let me go and see because it's unsafe. Anybody could have any trouble. So if an ambulance crew could do something, so don't drive yourself or your spouse driving you. And take a baby aspirin. It won't do any harm if you're not allergic to aspirin, even if you don't have a heart attack. And of course, if you already had a heart attack once or if your spouse had heart attack, you probably will have a nitroglycerin at home. You take it under the tongue. It won't do any harm except it's going to drop the blood pressure and make you weak and tired, but it, it may help you to minimize the damage of the heart attack. So that's what you will do immediately if you suspect one. Next. And what do they do for the treatment? Of course, when you go to the emergency room, before even they diagnose, they will give you some oxygen. They will put you in the cardiac monitoring to see your rhythm, do an EKG, do the blood work. What they are looking for the blood work is if you are heart muscle does not get enough blood. And if the muscle started to die and there is a chemical spill called a troponin comes and it will show up within four hours of the heart attack. So anybody goes to the emergency room with chest pain, we do the blood work. If we see that chemical spill, then we know you are undergoing the heart attack. Even before you complete the heart attack, we could treat you and 
If not able to prevent it, we may minimize the damage. That's the purpose of this slide for you to understand. Once you have a heart attack, what do we do? I will talk about in the procedures. Next. Uh, we do the blood gases to see whether you have lack of oxygen. So we could give you oxygen. Heart catheterization is a put in a tube in the pipes and shoot a dye and make pictures. I will show you a picture of it for the people who never saw, want to see how it looks. Angioplasty is if we have a blockage, we put in a balloon, stretch it, and uh, remove the block, push it to the sides, just like a snow shovel, or put it in the sideways. We put the cholesterol plaques to the sides of the wall, and then sometimes they collapse, so we put a stent like a metal spring, as you see in your ballpoint, when you could see a small spring, the, some, that same size, we put it in the pipes, so the pipes stay open. And atherectomy is if there is a lot of blockages, we put a little bit of shaving machine like so we remove it. And of course, a pacemaker is when the rhythm gets so bad, temporarily we put that to stabilize. If nothing helps, you have to go through a bypass surgery. Bypass surgery is nothing but we don't treat the real disease, we give you palliative treatment. What do you mean? We don't do anything to the block because there are too many of them, we can put a stent. And just like a bypass road in our town, you avoid the city and go around. So the blockage is avoided. The, we take a piece of tissue from your leg and connect it from the above and below the blockage and get the blood supply to the, that's a bypass surgery in simple words. Next. This is the coronary angiogram. You could see this black one is the catheter tube. We put it in either through the arm or the leg and what we inject, stop. And you could see the pipe and the front is the left anti dizzying artery, the, the main artery. These two things are in the back of the heart or circumflex artery. We do a different tube to do the right coronary artery. There are three coronary arteries and you could see all those pipes, it's so small. The black one you see is the dye that is flowing through. I don't see any disease here because it's uniform. If you have a disease, it will be stopping there 80%, 70%, just like somebody pinched on it, and then the blood flow will continue. So then we know there is a blockage at that spot. That's how we do it. This is just for you to have some understanding what is angiogram, what they do. Next. Okay, now heart attack is done, taken care of the stent. What do we do post? You have to take your medications. Don't take any chances on that. And there are some medications not only to prevent further heart attack, it also uh, improves the other cell membranes and cardiac arrhythmias, other potential problems. And of course, there are aspirin, beta blockers. There are so many which I don't want to go through. This is not the total session for that and follow up with a doctor, which is every six months usually. And if you damage your heart muscle, you have to have a cardiac rehab to improve, which is exercise and stuff. The next. Finally, what you get out of this heart attack, I just want you to remember, eat less, walk more. This is the two things you have to remember because most of the times, the extra food that your body is going through and constantly being detoxicated and our body goes bad. And so we just want you to walk and more and eat less. With that, I will finish this and I will be available for any simple questions that you have at the end of the session, which we wanted to see from Selva, uh, which is a very good uh, in regards to the Siddha prevention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Janagiraman, uh, for a very elegant presentation that even a very lay person can easily follow. Um, so we have already, you know, seen um, how the the latest uh, con conventional medicine treatments available. The only thing is, as Dr. Uh, Janagiraman mentioned, unless uh, you know you. Um, maintain certain quality of life up front, you know, we are uh, finally ending up with heart attack and there's only ways to treatment. Um, however, um, Dr. Selva, who is a Siddha uh, expert, you know, who is going to uh, now uh, talk about how you can intervene at very earlier steps, you know, by uh, following certain, uh, you know, uh, good practices in life uh, based on our uh, 
uh, traditional knowledge and uh, traditional medicine so he is going to talk about it uh, to uh, introduce about uh, dr salva and you know he um, has been uh, very uh, well known to our american uh, tamil community uh, because he has visited here several times uh, he is a uh, siddha uh, phd and uh, he is a secretary of the uh secretary and siddha consultant of health india foundation clinic uh, for integrated siddha and modern medicine and he is a research professor at the world institute of scientific exploration at uh, baltimore the wise he has contributed for more than 15 years of uh, developing siddha system and has uh, 10 years of research experience in siddha and modern integrative medicine and he when he served in the national institute of siddha in india Um, uh, he successfully coordinated a, a WHO sponsored project entitled Development and Publication of Siddha Treatment Guidelines for Selected Diseases. And uh, he was very actively contributing um, to the treatment of uh, you know, COVID in the last two, three years using Siddha. And uh, he's an experienced physician who encountered various clinical conditions and he's treated with the Siddha medicine. and he has presented more than 35 research papers in national and international conferences he has also received certificate of appreciation uh, by department of community health and preventive medicine morehouse school of medicine in atlanta georgia um, so now i invite dr selva uh, to present his uh, talk thank you <coughs> Uh, thank you uh, dr shankar for introducing me and um, thank you dr janai raman for the excellent presentation um, so i start uh, from the last slide of the dr janai raman the secret of living uh, well is eat less walk double laugh triple and love without measures i start with this quote so siddha system of medicine is an ancient medical system of uh, the world the three key principles of tra- traditional siddha system of medicines are kapu nikam and nirepu already mentioned by uh, dr shankar at this uh, discussion we are going to cover the levels of traditional siddha preventive methods in heart attack it almost like self care mentioned by and elaborately uh, discussed in who world health organization so we are going to see the primordial preventive methods primary prevention secondary prevention it includes daily discipline there is a non ulakkam mentioned in siddha literature diet yoga pranayama and siddha herbal home remedies so in uh, siddha system there are three main principles the first one is the kapu prevention and protection of any diseases from the environment and many other causative factors nikam means the elimination of the disease nirepu means the very very important and unique concept in the system restoration of people to their full potential of good health after any ailments uh, so after any diseases we are uh, treating with uh, some kaya kalpa preparation and yogic practices it's mentioned in the literatures so the first thing uh, the levels of prevention the primordial prevention primary prevention secondary prevention and the tertiary prevention uh, this is the classification of the recent uh, medical science primordial prevention means prevent the development of the risk factors primary prevention means the managing the risk factors prevent the onset of the diseases that come under the primary prevention and the secondary prevention means the early diagnosis and the prompt treatment and the next a tertiary prevention this is also come under the secondary prevention reduction of the complication and the disability so these are all the um, uh, levels of prevention in heart attack so the primordial prevention the word primordial means existing from the beginning it's a meaning the primordial prevention involves working to prevent inflammation atherosclerosis and endothelial dysfunction from the uh, persons thus 
prevent the risk factors such as high blood pressure, excess weight, that is obesity, uh, uh, that is, and ultimately prevent the cardiovascular events. So once rarely discussed primordial prevention is now keystone of the American Cardiac Association. We can start practicing primordial prevention uh, ideally from the childhood. The more likely we are to achieve it and protect ourselves from the heart disease. The second thing of uh, the preventive method uh, is primary prevention. The primary prevention aims to keep a person risk of heart disease from having the first heart attack. It is usually aimed at the people who already have developed the cardiovascular risk factors such as high blood pressure, obesity, type 2 diabetes mellitus, heavy smoking and such conditions. The primary prevention focuses on controlling the risk factors by making healthy lifestyle changes if needed, taking the medications. So in the primary preventive methods, we are giving medications to treat the risk factors of uh, coronary events. The uh, third thing is the secondary prevention. <inaudible> this <inaudible> efforts are <inaudible> started after someone has heart attack, undergoes angioplasty or bypass surgery. It involves taking medications like aspirin and some other uh, cardiac uh, medicines and quitting the smoking, losing weight if needed, uh, exercise and following healthy lifestyle. So although the secondary prevention may sounds like closing the bone door after the horse had gone, this step can prevent secondary heart attack, halt the progression of the heart disease, and prevent the early death. So, Dr. Selva, one, one minute. Uh, your video is not visible. I think I just noticed it. Can you? Yes, uh, my my video is not operating. Okay, okay. That is, then it's good. Zoom is unable to detect the camera, uh, so that I I tried a lot, so I uh, not able to uh, okay, fix it. Fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, and these are all the uh, TSM preventive methods. The first one is the lifestyle modification, diet management, and Siddha Yoga methods. That is well accepted by the WHO, World Health Organization. Definition of self-care by the world, uh, WHO is the ability of individuals or families or communities to promote health, prevent illness, to maintain health, and to co cope up with the illness. These are all the self-care uh, definition mentioned in the WHO. So these are all the pri primordial preventive methods of uh, so the system of medicine. Nal Ulukam is the daily routine designed to maintain it, uh, connect to us, to our circadian rhythm. So traditional Siddha system of medicine has started importance of connecting with the nature. The disconnection from the circadian rhythm produces dysfunction of the vital organs. This dysfunction of the vital organs has been linked to the post health concerns, mainly uh, heart attack. So the non volukam the daily discipline as understood by the best time for our daily routine like walking, exercise, bathing, meditation, prayer, so meal time, study time, working time, relaxation time, all are come under the not will come, that is the, this uh, daily routine. This is necessary to maintain the healthy body, mind, and the soul. In addition to the aligning our circadian rhythm, waking up at 5 a.m. will be benefit for our lungs, breathing in fresh, unpolluted oxygen. If you perform yoga, go on walk and uh, perform some uh, positive thinking, positive attitude in the morning. So these are all some uh, primordial methods, early morning waking up, doing pranayama and asanas, relaxation methods, drinking adequate waters, especially nirakaram, that is the fermented rice water, avoid that is artificial sugar, that is white sugar, table salt, refined oil, other things, and the periodical bubble cleansing method to enhance the gut microbiome. Um, Oil bath once in four, uh, once in four days, 
is mentioned in the ancient literature, but at least once in a week, we are completely going to take the oil bath. So avoid chemical products in our day-to-day -day usage. Um, be careful of the chemicals present in our food. So this is the combination, early morning waking up, uh, yoga practice, and taking ginger and honey will help in many of our patients in challenging conditions like type 2 diabetes mellitus, obesity, hypertension, and ischemic heart disease. So these are all some uh, uh, factors for uh, poor quality of diet, lack of knowledge, lack of availability, um, price of the healthy food, um, time scarcity. These are all some conditions. So it will lead to the cardiovascular risk factors like uh, 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 blood pressure and um, obesity and other risk factors. So reduction of excess calories. So increase intake of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts. These are uh, helpful to overcome the uh, overcome and prevent the risk factors of coronary events. So reduce usage of uh, whole uh, the meat, uh, red meat, added sugar, trans fat, uh, sodium excess uh, water and um, drinks, saturated fats, etc. So gut microbiome. I think you all well known about the gut microbiome. So our body contains 37.2 trillion cells in our body. There are more microbe cells in person's body than the human cell. That is 39 trillion cells. The gut microbiome plays a very important role in our uh, health by helping our immune system and many other aspects of the health. We need to keep them happy. So dysfunction of microbes present in our GA tract that is intestine may contribute to the weight gain, high blood pressure, and other uh, risk factors mentioned in our uh, mentioned by Dr. John Agarama. For the healthy microbes in our gut, in our GA tract, eat wide variety of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and fermented foods like buttermilk and fermented rice water. So this is uh, another method of uh, regulating the GA tract. So intestinal uh, gut microbiome regulation method so once in four months, in the ancient Sutta literature mentioned about the bubble cleansing method. So castor oil, ginger juice, and honey is the combination. If we have any persons, any children in the age of five to eight years, each one teaspoon, that is castor oil, one teaspoon, ginger juice, one teaspoon, and honey, once in four months, given the early morning, on the whole day, we get some loose tools, some may have vomiting, the whole detoxification happen on that particular day. The age of 9 to 12 years, each 2 teaspoon, 13 to 17 years, each 3 teaspoon, 16 to 65 years, each 4 teaspoons, more than 65 years, 2 to 4 teaspoons based on the health conditions of a particular patient. So this is the unique method uh, of bubble cleansing method. This will help the gut microbiome. So niragaram, the fermented rice water is another important nutrient for our gut microbiome. It contains all trace elements, essential amino acids, probiotics and nutrients. So it enhances the production of rare vitamins like B6 and B12 vitamins, which are not easily available to other food like vegan diet. So this is ideal drink during the convalescence and prevent it, prevent many diseases. So the primordial prevention also mentioned about the eating pattern. This is called conscious eating. So how to eat, how much to eat, how many times to eat is uh, mentioned in uh, Thirumulat Thirumandaram, uh, Thirukural and many other literatures of uh, Siddhas. So 50% uh, filled with the solid food, 25% fill with the liquid like buttermilk, soup, and water. 25% keep empty. The how many times? So uh, eat once a day, become yogi. Eat twice a day, become bohi. That's a healthy person. Yogi means sage. Eat thrice, become rogi, deceased person. 
those who eats more than thrice a day becomes pallarohi that is a multi morbidity that may lead to uh, more than uh, two chronic health conditions may occur if you if what somebody is eating more than thrice a day so we should avoid white sugar table salt chili and tamarind if not possible we reduce usage of chili and tamarind but the white sugar and table salt is very very toxic so by what are the alternates for white sugar you use honey palm sugar and fruits for the table salt we can use sea salt rock salt or black salt for the tamarind garcinia camphogia there is kokum is available in the us market so we should also avoid refined oils maida modified or adulterated milk artificial sweeteners coloring agents these are all the some uh, uh, toxic materials we should avoid in our food so this is one uh, kayakalpa method mentioned in the uh, siddhas song kaalayil inji karumbagal chukku maalayil kadukai mandalam undu vara polai oondri kurihi nadaparum kolai veesi kulavi nadapare this is the mention these are all the three key ingredients fresh ginger dried ginger and uh, the kadukai myrobalan so how to how do we use simply we remove the skin of the fresh ginger fry it in a clarified butter soak it in a honey for one day the dosage is 1 teaspoon a day the ideal time to take this elixir is 5 to 6 am the second is preparation of a dried ginger elixir soak the dried ginger in a lime water for an hour then the dry under the sunlight for at least 2 days or 3 days remove the screen and grind it well mix equal quantity of palm jaggery the dosage is 1 teaspoon the ideal time for taking this elixir is 11 am the next one is the chebulik myrobalan kadukai haritaki in sanskrit boil the chebulik myrobalan kadukai paal la potu kaichu boil the chebulik myrobalan in cow's milk for 15 minutes dry in the sunlight for 3 days and then remove the seeds and grind it the dosage is 1 teaspoon with the honey the ideal time is 7 pm so these are all uh, the three uh, key uh, ingredients to prevent the all the primordial all the uh, risk factors mentioned in the primary preventive methods that is uh, hypertension diabetes obesity all are prevented by using this type of uh, herbal elixirs so the primordial prevention come under the asanas so doing asanas and uh, sun salutation methods are very helpful in preventing uh many diseases these are all come under the primordial preventive methods the prevention of risk factors of the heart attack so this is very very important savasana which is very very useful uh position corpse position so in this savasana every muscle of our body including stomach eyes tongues mouth should be relaxed uh, feet should be uh, hip width apart slightly wider palm should should be facing upward no tension anywhere in the body the mind should be relaxed so once a day 5 minutes will prevent many many uh, challenging health conditions of the modern society so this another one is uh, the abdominal breathing uh, it is also called diaphragmatic breathing or um, conscious breathing so it is very simple method sit in a comfortable position put one hand on our belly button just below the ribs the other hand in the chest wall take a deep breath through both nostrils breathe out through the mouth do this breathing 3 to 10 times per day ideally empty stomach so this is very useful for prevention of many diseases it is very useful for anxiety and depression so these are all also come under the primordial preventive methods so these are all the sleep pattern so younger adult 18 to 65 age group 7 to 9 hours 
of sleep is essential in the particular it is in the night not in the morning so the ideal time for waking up is a 5 am so please calculate the uh, uh, bedtime so very very important thing is stop using electronic instrument at least 90 minutes prior to sleep this is very important rule for preventing many diseases not only in the heart attack preventing many diseases so uh, next one is the new factor for the heart attack tmao there is a trimethylamine n oxide is the uh, one new molecule so what is the trimethylamine n oxide the trimethylamine n oxide is the molecule generated from the red meat egg yolk high fat food via the gut microbial metabolism if you eat the fiber diet it goes uh, very useful to our system it is considered as a primordial preventive methods if you use the trans fat or some modified meat red meat uh, the tmoa is produced in our uh, ga tract the circulating tmoa can uh, activate platelet hyperactivity increased foam cell formations and induced inflammatory response and a decrease a reverse cholesterol transport. Uh, these effects contribute to the progression of atherosclerosis, that is the hardening of the blood vessels, heart failure and kidney diseases. So these are all uh, the evidences already mentioned, already published in uh, the prior reviewed journals. This is one uh, peer reviewed journal, that is Nature. Uh, the microbiota derived from uh, TMOA predicts cardiovascular risk after STEMI. There is a ST elevated myocardial infarction. This is also called uh, the common name is heart attack. So the current guidelines, what is the current guidelines for um, the TMOA in our uh, uh, blood? This uh, It is a, a blood test. So less than two uh, micromole is the low risk. 2 to 9.9 .9, um, micromole is the intermediate risk. More than 10 micromole is the high risk. In human uh, recent clinical studies, uh, that is evidence that positive correlation between the elevated plasma levels of TMOA, TMAO, and the increased risk for the major adverse risk events. So, current publications have shown that. Interventions such as dietary management, intestinal flora regulations, the inhibition of TMAO, precursor production, and the treatment with the medicines or traditional herbal medicines can prevent the uh, heart attack, including the um, atherosclerosis of our body. So, how to reduce the TMAO? Intestinal flora regulations, periodical bowel cleansing and uh, usage of uh, um, that is uh, sprouted green grams black gram high by fiber diet usage of niragara that is um, natural probiotic uh, fermented rice water these are all uh, the uh, the treatment for reducing the tmo tmao so these are all the some uh, Siddha holistic approach for prevention and treatment of uh, heart attack. The first thing is the detoxification. So this detoxification is nothing but the periodical bowel cleansing method using castor oil, ginger juice and honey. So diet therapy includes the Siddha body constitution based food, low calorie, high fibrous millets, mindful eating. That is the five uh, sense organ eating. That is a conscious eating. The probiotic and prebiotic uh, for gut microbiome. Uh, then the fasting therapy. Fasting therapy is very, very uh, important for prevention of many diseases, including heart attack and obesity. Physical activity therapy, including the yoga, herbal supplements. So we are going to see some uh, homemade preparations for prevention and the treatment for coronary, angio, uh, uh, coronary artery events. You can use this herbal supplements along with 
your regular medications like aspirin and some other uh, isardil, any other medication so you can uh, add along with this uh, herbal preparations. The first one is the pahal kai, that is bitter gourd. It inhibits the fat synthesis. It reduces the accumulation of fat in our body. It increases the glucose uptake. So this combination is effectively prevent the heart attack. So next one is the very, very important Moringa. Moringa reduces the body weight and uh, uh, some other uh, bad primordial um, risk factors of uh, coronary angio events, that is heart attack. So regulates the it regulates the cholesterol metabolism. It uh, uh, fat degradation by the some other uh, chemical reactions in our body. It increase the glucose utilization. So we use this moringa leaf along with the cumin seed, especially in the early morning, will help to reduce the blood pressure and it increase enhance the uh, biological activities of internal organs. So early morning, 10 leaves of moringa, 10 uh, pieces of the moringa leaves along with one teaspoon of uh, cumin seed, chew and swallow and then drink the niraha, that is the fermented rice water will help to reduce the risk factors for heart attack. So next thing is the um, turmeric. So you all well known about the uh, effectiveness of the turmeric. So many uh, recent research reports support the usage of turmeric. So usage of turmeric in our uh, uh, culinary purpose mixed with uh, buttermilk or used along with uh, ghee, it is very useful for preventing uh, the um, risk factors for heart attack. That is obesity, hypertension and uh, diabetes mell mellitus. That is the type 2 diabetes mellitus is also uh, treated by usage of moringa, curry leaf, and uh, turmeric. So fenugreek, another important uh, homemade preparation. It inhibits the many um, uh, So the uh, usage of fenugreek, 12 week administration improved the glucose metabolism in our body. It improved the HbA1c, body weight and the other risk factors of heart attack. So many research reports reveal that diabetes and other uh, risk factors will reduce by usage of the fenugreek. Ordinary fenugreek or we can sprout it vinegar. Mulai ketna dente. Mulai ketna dente am sari. Pachaya avu nama api saapla. Aladha thandi le ura vicha saapla. So herbal tea, in our literature, more than 50 herbal decoctions, herbal tea are mentioned. So stop using the normal coffee and tea. Uh, use uh, tulasi tea or bilbam tea or uh, mint tea. So many meta-analysis, many analysis increased uh, adipo adiponectin connection in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. This chemical is well-known factor for regulating the glucose levels, lipid metabolism, and insulin sensitivity through its anti-inflammatory and anti-fibrotic antioxidant effects. So anapodi, that is a very useful combination. It is the combination of curry leaf, dry ginger, thymol seed, asapodida, cumin seed, pepper, and fennel. This combination is useful for prevention of uh, many uh, risk factors of heart attack. This one is a very effective uh, tea, Marudam Pattai tea, Terminalia Arjuna bark. In Tamil, it is called Marudam Pattai. In Sanskrit, it is called Arjuna bark. So the four key ingredients are, one is Marudam Pattai, another one is the black cumin seed, uh, dried ginger and pepper. These are the four ingredients. Uh, we can use one teaspoon of uh, maradambatai powder, that is Arjuna powder, half a teaspoon of cumin seed, that is black cumin seed, half teaspoon of, um, that is dried ginger powder, half teaspoon of pepper, boil with 300 ml of water, reduced to 150 ml, and drink in the early morning. You can take along with your regular medications. 
it will not interact with any cardiac medications like aspirin or any other um, vasodilator preparations. So this is uh, one key ingredients, key uh, decoction mentioned uh, for prevention as well as treating the uh, many heart diseases. So at this juncture, I would like to um, share this slide. So uh, regular exercise, drink adequate quantity of water, Niraharam, that is the whole race fermented water, as well as uh, usage of uh, the high fiber diet, meditation. Um, so eating in the right quantity with adequate uh, fiber content, walking and exercise. So meditation, reading good books, these are all the um, uh, key factors for prevention of heart attack. So at uh, last, uh, many cardiologists, that is uh, the cardiologist like uh, Dr. Jani Hiraman are working with the patients to try and get better solutions. If you develop the cardiac clock, so the cardiologists are working with the patients for get better solutions if somebody is having cardiac problems. But I would like you all realize that you have responsibility as well yourself, your children, family members and friends. Work together with GCSMR to beat the world's biggest killer disease. So GCSMR is conducting online and offline wellness program for preventing uh, the challenging diseases. So interested persons can contact our members. Thank you so much for um, all of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Salwa. Uh, it was a really, uh, you know, broad uh, knowledge of uh, the entire Siddha, how to cope with uh, cardiac issues. So uh, now uh, we will open the uh, webinar for questions. Uh, since we have more than 60 plus uh, you know, participants, I think we should uh, adjust uh, our time so that everyone gets a chance. So if you, any of you have a question, you can raise your hand in your, in the, you click reactions under the you know, Zoom bottom menu and the raise hand and we will call you to unmute and speak or you can post your name in your uh, in the chat and uh, please restrict to yourself just to 30 seconds just for asking the questions no comments if you have comments please share them in the in the chat only questions if you have specific questions please ask raise your hand or chat in the uh, chat thank you and you can ask for any one of the two uh, doctors and also you can say in English or Tamil, you know, both uh, you can uh, get answers. Uh, Shankar, you can call me, Shankar. Um, okay. Appa, come to the other side. Okay, yeah, I'll go to the other side. விஜய் ஜானகிராமனுக்கு முதல் கல்வி முதல்ல eloquent um, lecture which is uh, rich in contents and uh, go, uh, utility of time maga cherapana orai idilla vande enakku the correct oli nala vande oxygen koraiva irukku eduthukranga abindra dude symptom nu sonninga ipo mookadappu irukkaradhanal correct idu varudhu abindra mari anadha puridhal dhaan எங்களை மாதிரி பாமர மக்களுக்கு இருக்குது அது ஒன்று ரெண்டாவது ஹார்ட் பீட்டு இதயத்தினுடைய அந்த துடிப்பு வேகம் 
அதிகரிச்சதுன்னா அது வந்து அடைப்புனால ஹார்ட் அட்டாக் வருதுன்னா அது அது ஹார்ட் பீட் குறைவாக இருந்ததால் லைஃப் ஸ்பேன் வாழ்நாள் அதிகமாகும் அப்படின்ற மாதிரி டாக்டர் சொக்கலிங்கம் சொல்லிட்டு தமிழ்நாட்டில் ஒரு ஹார்ட் ஸ்பெஷலிஸ்ட் அவர் சொன்னார் ஹார்ட் பீட் வந்து குறைவாக இருக்கும் அதாவது நீங்கள் எக்ஸைட் ஆகாத இருக்கணும் அப்படின்ற அப்படின்னா உங்களுக்கு வந்து வாழ்நாள் அதிகரிக்கும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு சொல்லியிருக்காரு இந்த ரெண்டுத்து பத்தியுமான கொஞ்சம் விளக்கம் கொடுங்க ஐயா தேங்க்யூ ஃபார் யுவர் காமெண்ட்ஸ் ஐ திங்க் வாட் சொக்கலிங்கம் சேஸ் இஸ் கரெக்ட் பட் வாட் இட் ஈஸ் இஸ் இஃப் யூர் அட்ரலின் செக்ரீட்ஸ் யுவர் ஹார்ட் ரேட் கோஸ் ஆ normally we have the heart beat between 65 to 70 75 that's normal person doing nothing when you walk when you run the heart rate goes up because your heart is nothing but a pump it has to pump more blood for the rest of the body it goes up but at the same time without moving walking you could get your heart rate up when you get angry why because the adrenaline secretes so the blood pressure goes up and the adrenaline secretes so then the heart rate goes up not because heart worked hard because when you run your heart rate goes up it's not bad for you so doing nothing when your heart resting heart rate goes up it is nothing wrong with the heart rate itself it's a marker it tells you that something else is doing it that is the anger high blood pressure or overweight so the sportsmen have the heart rate between 40 45 they were also like you and i for 70 heartbeat but by working parasympathetic nervous system is changed so they have a better cardiac output adu epdina ungalku how i explain is the pump la veetla thanni adikumbodhu kada 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 nadichumnaaka you see only little bit water coming when you take a full string and then do it you have more coming out the same way if the heart rate is up your cardiac output is less when your heart rate is less your cardiac output is more the pump so that is the phenomenon it's explained so it's a sign but what do you do to have the lower heart heart rate not with the medication it's just by exercise walking more eating less and of course there are some other medications will increase your heart rate we have what we call as a beta blockers to reduce the heart rate that you could handle it so this is a sign the next thing you talked about is uh eating i believe uh, and the snoring snoring mukadai po you are right but what it is when you sleep the muscles relax and then there is a uvula in there it falls in the passage so not enough air is going the sound comes because of the vibration so it is a sign that your passage is not correct so you need more oxygen so the lack of oxygen causes tiredness cardiac arrhythmias irregular heartbeats and causes irregular heart beat when the na ho you don't have enough adequate blood supply being pumped by the heart so then the same thing that is if it's a normal pumping blockage here is no blockage but not adequate pumping the end result is only a poor blood supply to the muscle so that's the reason for the heart attack thank you nandri nandri ya nandri thara elmale uh next shastri i think i don't know whether it's dr shanti yeah thank you thank you sir uh, this is sushil shastri um i have a question um uh, two questions actually so uh in the pre- first of all i want to thank both the doctors for a wonderful presentation uh the one question i have is regarding tmao uh, it's the first time i'm hearing about it so if you can shed some more light on exactly what it is and uh, is it like we can measure it in a blood test is it something i can talk to my physician um that is one question the other question is i have been diagnosed with plaque psoriasis and i've heard that uh, i am predisposed to have heart disease uh in a earlier age because of plaque psoriasis uh any any prevention measures that i can take apart from lifestyle changes as you already uh, mentioned um if you can please uh, uh, cover that thank you one um, i i will answer the story as this question probably selva could answer the yeah. tm but do we want to do it in this is only cardiac uh, 
if we have time we can answer that question at the end okay. there are many questions waiting right so okay. yeah you can address the first one tma okay um uh, thank you for asking uh, questions and thank you for your comment so trimethylamine n oxide is um, it's not a new one in a, in a medical research it is uh, used to uh, take the uh, research for uh, past uh, one decade so it is a molecule i already mentioned about that it's a molecule generated from the red meat egg yolk high fat food in the from the gut microbiota this is the uh, reactions of red meat egg yolk and the trans fat with the gut microbiome so it is the blood test this is the tmao is the uh, one blood test it's a normal value i already mentioned about uh, less than 2 uh, micromole is the low risk and 2 to 9.9 .9 micromole is the intermediate risk more than 10 uh, micromole is the at high risk I discussed with the cardiologist here in PhD Medical College here. He um, is also uh, uh, have a research in the TMAO. Uh, it is very relevant to the cardiac event. So discuss with your cardiologist and um, take advice from your cardiologist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, address the psoriasis question at the end. Uh, next is Somasundaram Ramasamy. Uh, Manakam, uh, in the KV, Dr. Selva, or in the Pirkuda Klanakunda, in the RCA Katanum Sirudan Ingle, the Saranda the Abdin Trade, the glycemic index, all on the high fiber content in the Rende the Vachisolana. In the Vetla on the RCA Katla Sirudani, one over the Idea Noy on the Tadako the Abdin Rathakana. Uh, data Muru uh, data Yirk, the studies in a Yirk, the Abdin Radone, Yanda, the other Niche, the other Abdin Trapachatil, uh, RC Niraha, the uh, rice Niraha, Aduk Badilaha, Nama in the Kamanchore, like Kedvaraka Tani, the Kudal uh, Serapatana Yirkum of the Interpretal. Manakanga, the Arsi of being Radunda, Ekarathal and the polished rice of being Razanam on the Arsi in the Pine Brathi to Pranale, other bed and the Sirdan Yangal Naladin Ramariana would Karat Irk. Anna, number traditional rice, Namur Lakukudia, Manichamba, Maple Chamba, Karanguru, Kulakar, Pungar, and Saint Jolitur Kukudi, Arsigal, Lame, low glycemic index. Anala, Arsi Veda, Sirdan Ingal, Miga Charanda, then a sold Ralukilla. Who won the overvalued Namadan Ingal? One Arsi, one Sami, one Kudravalina, Naria, Dani Milk. Who won the Kame, Tanitaniana, Tanitu Merke? Ipani a Sami, Bainbertaningana, Ulubundu Ratatala, and the dead vessels on the Suringi Biri the Kudavir, the Dingra Marie Rusala studies. Adamadri, Namond, Unbo the Dani Ingleme, Naladda. அதல நம்ம பயன்படுத்த வேண்டியது வந்து ஆர்கானிக் அதாவது தீட்டாத தீட்டப்படாத கைகுத்தல் புழுங்கலரி சேர்ந்தா ரொம்ப நல்லது அதுல உள்ள நீராகாரமும் நல்லது ஒவ்வொரு நீராகாரமே அதுக்கான தனித்தனி குணங்கள் உண்டு பெரும்பாலும் நம்ம வந்து கம்பு வரகு சோளம் இதை குறச்சிக்கிட்டு மத்த தானியங்களை அதிகமாக பயன்படுத்து நல்ல பலன் கிடைக்கும் நன்றிங்க நன்றிங்க थैंक यू ராம்சாமி அண்ட் டாக்டர் செல்வா நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் ராஜி செல்வா Hello, Raji Salom, Raji Salom. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Uh, Daniel. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes. Sir, myself. Yes, good Please ask. Uh, sir, is there a husband mm -hmm. uh, health issues related to uh, question, sir? I am going to say that 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 I am going Doctor can check for no ECGL and normal sonaga, but in the report it is mentioned mild MR of dinsilitric and mild TR nurke. So is the Patti and Karumba clear and a terri land and the Ninja Richel Edna Lerkus, soft order and a Rumba Kashapadra Rumba Nadakra, even Apakuda digestion Nagama, the Ninja Richel Nala Rumba Kashapadra, sir. Is the Kanavada consulum with that. Doctor Janik Raman, I will explain that. Ninja soft, soft, I don't think it's a heart problem. 
அதுவும் ஒரு மாசமா இருக்குங்கிறீங்க ஒரு மாசமா இருந்ததுனாக்கா பை திஸ் டைம் இஃப் இட் இஸ் அ சம் ஹார்ட் ப்ராப்ளம் இட் வுட் ஹாட் அண்ட் வேர்ஸ் யூட் ஹவ் ஹேட் மோர் சிம்டம்ஸ் ஸோ மை எஜுகேட்டட் கேஸ் திஸ் இஸ் ஆசிட் ப்ராப்ளம் ஃபார்ட்டி பர்சன்ட் ஆஃப் த பீப்புள் ஆஃப் இந்தியன் ஆரிஜின் ஹேவ் ஹை அசிடிட்டி அந்த ஹை அசிடிட்டிக்கு காரணம் நம்ம ஃபுட் ஹேபிட்ஸும் இருக்கு அதோட இல்லாமல் இந்த ஃபுட் பைப்பில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னாக்கா பிட்வீன் த இசாஃபகஸ் அண்ட் ஸ்டமக் தெர் இஸ் நோ கேட் இட் ஜஸ்ட் ஓப்பன் எக்ஸப்ட் தட் வில் பி சுருங்கி இருக்கும் நம்ம நிறைய சாப்பிட சாப்பிட த கேட் இஸ் ஓப்பன் ஸோ தி ஆசிட் கம்ஸ் அப் அதுவும் வந்து லாட் ஆஃப் அஸ் ஹாவ் பேட் ஹேபிட் ஆஃப் ஈட்டிங் அண்ட் கோயிங் டு பேட் when we lay down by gravity the food is not going down it regurgitates acid comes up adu yen the acid ne educate pandrena ka oru masama irukengringa saapta odane varudengringa and of course if you have a bad heart after a heavy meal you may have some discomfort adu undu erichala irukka adu heavy a irukum but there are some people i have seen burning sensation coming as a heart attack but not every day for a month by this time something must have happened so my guess again is acid reflux adukku enna pannalam naka ninga before you go to the doctor you could get some anti acid pills uh, india la ella gelusil adala vikranga indoor la nexium anti acids melax alla irukku it won't do any harm even if you have a heart problem just to try for not two days then go and mention they could do upper endoscopy or uh, some studies and find out and that could be easily treatable Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, sir. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Selva and Dr. Yanagraman, thank you for the very informative session. I really appreciate it. Uh, the question that I have for Dr. Yanagraman, um, years ago, uh, before I had any, uh, you know, issue with my heart and, you know, subsequent diagnosis, bypass surgery and all that i had asked my cardiologist uh, whether you know whether i should go for you know the procedure not procedure or, or whatever it's called evaluation called calcium scoring appo vandu avaru vandu enna discourage pannar no there's no you know it's not a good uh, uh, you know there's no it's not very dependable abdinar uh, but recently uh, i have read many articles about and mari calcium score test pandradha nalladhu abdin solli படிச்சிருக்கேன் இதை பத்தி நீங்க என்ன நினைக்கிறீங்க டாக்டர் ஜானகிராம் யூ சோ மச் ஐ திங்க் இட் இஸ் நாட் ரெலவெண்ட் ஃபார் யூ பிகாஸ் யூ ஆல்ரெடி ஹேட் ஹார்ட் டிசீஸ் எஸ்டாப்ளிஷ்ட் பீப்புள் ஹூ நெவர் ஹேட் அ ஹார்ட் அட்டாக் அண்ட் தே ஹேவ் அ கேல்சியம் சோ மோர் தேன் ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் இன் திட்டி ஸ்கேன் தேர் ஹையர் இன்சிடென்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹார்ட் டிசீஸ் இது வந்து இட்ஸ் அ ஸ்கிரீனிங் ப்ராசஸ் தானே தவிர it is not a diagnostic tool okay. and so the another reason most of the people don't use it to be honest the medicare stopped paying that for the test so people don't do it but ipdi solrana people with the heart disease have a lot of high calcium score people with a lot of calcium score high score all don't have the heart disease in other words i have had a lot of patients referred some doctor said oh he has a high calcium score 110 120 400 500 then we do the stress test we do the cardiac catheterization we find it 20 30% blockages which is somebody else even without a higher calcium score will have so in other words a just coincidence unless the calcium score is around 1000 plus then you have heart disease what is a calcium score for you to understand if you make some bumps on the uh, wall then you try to paint yourself without a professional there is a rough spots the same way atherosclerosis atherosclerosis forms in the pipe vessels and it repairs itself and deposits some calcium spots so if there is a constant repair goes on in atherosclerosis with your whatever the reasons body uh, mends itself then you see a lot of calcium score so if it should be thousands and thousands of worry uh, for you mr selvam you already had the heart attack and here after it's not going to be useful you just have to keep your cholesterol down especially your ldl cholesterol should be below 72 and right. there are some easy ways to do compared to what it was 2 3 years ago okay uh, th- thank you thank you dr jamran this is not for to benefit me this is to benefit others 
that's the reason why i raised that question okay that, okay thank, thank you, you so much yeah. yeah so next is dr santi raja uh, she is also one of our uh, uh, mem board members in our uh, gcsmr is very good contributor uh, dr santi raja hey, uh, good morning uh, good evening i am in india now so two questions to selva selva uh, in one of your mm -hmm. previous uh, webinars uh, you mentioned about the periodic bowel cleaning uh, uh, you mentioned lime juice instead of honey so this is uh, this time i saw like yeah ginger juice castor oil and honey right so that is one thing and second thing is uh, i wanted to know whether the abdominal breathing is equivalent to kapalapati okay the first question i always uh, mentioned in my slide uh, ginger juice uh, castor oil and honey so in some specific cases only we advise to take uh, um, lemon juice instead of uh, ginger juice in some liver disorders in some specific conditions but in general public we use castor oil ginger juice and honey the second question is the kapalabadi and abdominal breathing is entirely different kapalabadi is different uh, abdominal breathing is for beginners for breathing exercise for the beginners it's uh, different okay but uh, thank you, one thank you. Honey, uh, just uh, as an extension of this like honey is a bowel binder we use it for as a bowel binder right? like you know patients with loose stools if you don't think it's infective we give honey and it arrests the uh, bowel movements but uh, here we are using it for uh, uh, purging the bowel right so, so um, this is the combination that is the synergistic effect uh, antagonistic effect you, you know very well about the uh, drug interactions like uh, food interaction uh, drug interaction like food interactions so this three combination uh, is not only for the purgation it is for preventing the GA tract disturbance it is also prevent the gastritis and other some other company uh, uh, gastric uh, complaints we uh, prevent the complications of some other uh, uh, for purgation and uh, nauseating feeling we add honey yeah, my grandma used to say honey is used in both ways both uh, in the case of constipation as well as in diarrhea yes thank you. Thank you. Thank you. how do you dilute or if you are taking a raw honey oh okay thank you <laughs> Uh, next is uh, Anand Palanisami. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vijay and Dr. Shelva for the wonderful presentation. Um, so do people with low blood pressure um, at high risk for uh, a heart attack? And the second question is, what does low blood pressure uh, signify? Low blood pressure is not a problem for a heart attack, but very low blood pressure is. I'll tell you why. And normally, our blood pressure is 120 over 80. And if it is below 90 or 100 is okay, below 90 systolic, you are not able to pump enough blood from the heart to reach the toes. Breathing life, which is nothing but a pumping machine. So you need certain blood pressure. As you could hear from the hospital, so he doesn't have a blood pressure. We are giving some medications to improve. The commonest reason for low blood pressure is lack of volume. People don't drink enough volume, water. So lack of volume. So usually if there is a low blood pressure, when you come to the hospital after passing out, they give IV fluids. And if there is a blood loss from some injuries, then you give blood, water alone, or the fluid, uh, normal saline alone will not help. So then you give blood and plasma. That's why during surgery, they give that because they know you lost the blood, so you have to replace the blood. So there is a lot of reasons for that, as I mentioned. So high blood pressure, of course, all of you know, low blood pressure is only secondary to some reason you lost volume or some other medications, anaphylaxis, uh, some reactions. Other than that, low blood pressure is not good, especially if it is below 90 systolic blood pressure, because you need higher than that to pump. And right, I will stop at that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Anand and uh, Dr. Janayaman. And next is, uh, there is a question in the chat, and then I will come back to this. Uh, 
Uh, can we drink those decoction when taking the thyroid medication? Uh, this is to Dr. Uh, the answer is already already given by Dr. Arulamadhan. Oh, okay. Uh, that's okay. 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 Then, then well, we think we have uh, one last question. Uh, Sridhar? Yeah. Uh, sir, I uh, have the heart blockage. Mm. And I uh, have a calcium score on the 900 plus, 960 something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I consulted with uh, Dr. Shivaraman. Our one day, basically, I am going to go dyslipidemia. Mm -hmm. So he gave the medicines, and uh, my lipids and uh, all my LDL, HDL, everything is like uh, came to normal. Mm -hmm. But I am also taking uh, aspirin and uh, uh, this uh, satin along mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. So then question na na po and i am able to walk like 7000 steps without a break mm -hmm. initially a little difficult up to 1000 uh, steps mm -hmm. then after that it is uh, it's okay for me and mm -hmm. other thing is like climbing bodhe en konjam kashtama irukke climb pannum bodhe steps mele irum bodhe so idukku edavadhu i i believe maybe still blocks are there and CT angio pannano sunnanga adu pannittu dhaan neenga you can confirm so neenga neenga unga outpace na sir okay I, I i will address this i think as i mentioned if your calcium score is above 1000 you have a disease so obviously you have some blockage it's around 900 so that fits in you know the calcium score is critically important as it is at the deposit that happened after self-repair with atherosclerosis. But what you can do is prevent further atherosclerosis. You have brought it down. So you are in good shape. You know, now you are already walking and shortness of breath is going to come when you get up steps so many times. And it's a question of time. As you practice, you will be able to do much better. But what I would suggest at this point more than the CPNG there, Probably a treadmill exercise stress test. They could do in front of your doctor. They know your capacity. We all have a standard how much you are supposed to do according to your heart rate. 220 minus your age is your target heart rate. So if they don't see any changes in the EKG or any chest pain, then you are fine. Who cares whether you have a 30%, 40% block, your heart is able to pump enough blood to those blockages. You're not going to have a 0% block. As we get a, a gray hair, we're also going to get some blockages all of us. But it's an effective function. That's what you have to do. And you could take care. You already did it with your bringing your cholesterol, so you're not building up the atherosclerosis any further. That's my answer. And take the aspect that won't do you as long as you're below age of 70. Above 70, we don't recommend. The reason is the risk of aspirin and the benefit of the aspirin for not proving that you already had a heart attack, then it is not useful for a primary purpose. If you had a heart attack, then even after age 70, we recommend. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jayagrama. Thank you. I think there, is, uh, there are a couple of uh, questions in the chat. I think I'll combine everything to Dr. Selva. This is. Uh, one, what herbal preparation should we take to reduce obesity? And then second question is, uh, appreciate if you can tell there is a treatment for snoring in Siddha. And then the third one is throw some light on the necessity of consuming water to, to, to third liters of a day, per, per day. Maybe one by one, I can. Okay. And the first thing, uh, there is no um, uh, specific drug for all the uh, obesity control, there is a, 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 a weight control. There is a one, not only one drug. It is a specialized individualistic. The main thing is diet control. So um, there is a, ideally the morning rice-based diet, afternoon greens and vegetables for dinner, fruits and nuts. This is my diet advice to reduce weight. So consult your physician. Uh, and uh, many uh, herbs I mentioned in my slide, that is the fenugreek, vendayam, uh, karunjirakam, black cumin, um, asafogida, as well as the, the main thing, coca, carcinia camphogia, 
the Garcinia capsules are also available in the US market. But cocum is, uh, instead of using the tamarind, use cocum for reducing the weight. The first question. The second thing, snoring. For snoring, uh, avoid the, uh, some toxic chemical-based toothpaste. Instead of using the toothpaste, clove-based tooth powder. Using clove-based tooth powder is helpful for reducing the snoring, especially in the night. And uh, gargle hot water with the clove powder is also useful. This also needs specific, specialized, uh, personalized care. What is underlying cause? We can uh, address their condition also. Uh, what is the third question, Dr. Uh, yeah, last one is uh, throw some light on the necessity of consuming water, two third of liters. Water, of uh, yes, yes. Uh, water is based on the environment. Based on the environment only we can. Uh, so whenever you get a thirst, you drink. So the ideal thing is early morning drinking uh, niraha, whole rice fermented water, fermented rice water early morning. Uh, start with 200 ml, gradually increase up to 500 ml early morning. And whenever get a thirst, you drink. So not a specific um, quantity for uh, all. I think that we will close the question and answer. And uh, thank you, Dr. Janaki uh, Shankar, Dr. there's Salva. one more yeah. question. Sorry for okay, Anshu, Anshu Gupta. She has oh, wrapped, okay. she just yeah, wrapped up with okay. her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The so last one. Anshu. Hi. Um, I have a question for uh, Dr. Selva about uh, taking statins because you have diabetes. So, you know, I've had diabetes. My cholesterol numbers have been consistent for about the last 10 years. You know, my um, total cholesterol, I think, has always been around 165. Um, HDL is also fine. My LDL numbers um, have always been around 100. Sometimes it's 102, sometimes 98. But the doctors always say, well, you have diabetes and, you know, it's risk-based, so we want your LDL number to be you know, 70. And so you should take a statin medication. And, you know, I really don't want to be put on this lifelong medication. Um, you know, once, you know, is it, really, is, is it really that much of a risk that my LDL is, you always, you hear under 100, but it's like exactly at 100. Uh, okay. Uh, this is Donna Kramer. I will answer that. I've been practicing for 40 years. 25 years, 20 years back, our lab said normal cholesterol is 300 and LDL should be below 200 because it's based on a, a study came from Boston. Then when we saw more and more heart attack with American Heart Association, RSS, American College of Cardiology dropped the number to total is 200, HDL should be above 40, LDL should be below 130. Even today, that is the normal. But once you have a heart disease, this is primary prevention, then we want that to be below 100. So yesterday, your level was 130. We said normal. Last night, you had a heart attack. Now we say it has to be below 100. Why? Because we saw the higher the LDL, the more the blockages. So we are trying to be a little bit upstream, going before the events happen. So we wanted to cut it down to 100. Now, why they say 72 is, if there is a 40% blockage in you, and if your cholesterol is 105 LDL, if I bring it down to 72 or less, we have the studies that 40% blockage become 30% or 20%. Just like a building, it's a reverse happens. So that is the reason. In your case, 100 is not bad, but if you are a diabetic, and you are a woman, especially menopause. And if you have all the other risk factors for each one you add, high blood pressure, your family history of heart disease, what are you being with the family history? Everybody has a heart problem when they are 75. I'm talking about any of your parents or siblings have a heart attack at the before the age of 55 if it's a woman, below 50 if you are a man. That, that's the kind of family history. So it's a genetics. So then we have to bring it. So I don't think it is a must, but you said you have to take a lifelong medicine. Let me tell you, the disease is lifelong. 
So if it, if it could be proved, if it agrees with you, why don't you take it? If the medication doesn't agree, then you have to say the risk and benefit. And probably in your case, your low dose of statin will be useful. I will also tell you one more point that I'm aware and is proved data. Even if the blood pressure, the cholesterol numbers don't come down, if you are taking a low dose of statin, your endothelial function is much better. What is endothelial function? The pipes shrink and contract better. So you have a less number of ruptures and clogging others endothelial function being normal. So that does help. I'm not selling any drugs, but this is our opinion. We recommend the lowest possible dose. Thanks. Okay. I think we are already running short of time. So we will wind up. Uh, thank you, Dr. Janagraman and Dr. Selva for an excellent presentation and uh, answering all the questions. Now I will give it to Rama of GCSMR for thanking the audience and the session. Um, Manakam and uh, greetings to everyone. Thank you very much for each and everyone for joining this um, webinar. Um, and Dr. Shankar already thanked uh, Dr. Jani Raman uh, and Dr. Selva for their for a really really valuable time and all the great information, uh, which many of us didn't know how um, the heart attack is occurring. Um, especially the videos gave us a very clear idea, um, and and also you know all the. Um, uh, facts that Dr. Selva said, uh, lifestyle changes are very, very important. Uh, so please, please um, follow uh, how much ever you can. We all uh, always say that, you know, we only can do our best, whatever happens, happens. So we will always try to do what is best and uh, change the lifestyle for good. And um, hope um, everyone um, had a good time. And also, um, the last thing that I want to uh, mention is please reach us uh, at this email, gcsmr20 at gmail.com for any questions. Um, I know that a lot of you might have uh, had other questions. So please reach out to us so that we can address um, any of your um, concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, you know, we, uh, we always ask our um, listeners for donations if possible. And that's all in our website details. Um, it is it is for the good cause. So whatever you can be appreciated uh, because donors are the souls and roots mm -hmm. for our organization. We uh, appreciate all the help that we can get. Uh, thank you very much and see you all for another interesting webinar. And, and also mm -hmm. if you want any of the disease conditions or remedies to be addressed, please email us and we will um, have that in line for the next webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you all.